Hi right, guys, so it's time to do a thermal mod yet again on another Cube Core M3 tablet. Something that we should never have to do if the manufacturer actually put a thermal pad between the heatsink and the rear alloy housing. So in order to do this, first there's a couple of precautions. This is all standard stuff. Don't attempt to do this if you have never opened anything up like this before. You will probably break something, so please don't blame me. Don't come and comment or come and onto the website and say that uh, because it was my fault you ruined your tablet, yada yada yada. You know the drill. Anyway, I had to say that. So to start out, the easiest place I have found is to work your way around the top here with a pry tool such as a car guitar pick, sorry, and start around the top here because we've got plastic against plastic, more flexible, and I went around here and you have to literally break, but not physically break, you don't want to do that. Those clips on here that clip everything in. Now the corners are the hardest part. So I just wedged it in there. Now you need to use quite a bit of pressure and force in the beginning to get things going. Once it's going, you can simply just go around, pop, 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 pop. I've done most of that already. Uh, the areas to be very careful is right here. Okay, so we've got a couple of speaker grills here. If you happen to have your pry tool or your uh, card, for example, that I have, and you pass along here, you can damage this metal along here so just be aware of that be careful of that the other thing too is careful of any ribbons or the camera module is actually right here so don't want to push that in right and deep okay so it's a little bit of a nightmare but once you get that all on and clipped i had a few difficulties around this power button area then you can proceed to simply just push this part down and then you can remove the whole back plate on there so this looks very familiar to me we have an aluminium or aluminum, however you want to pronounce it. Heat spreader right here on top of the Core M3. So we'll have to take these screws off, all four of them, remove this plate, and there we can repaste it or add some copper. Of course, if you wanted to replace the SSD, now's the time to do that. It needs to be a SATA 3 spec. M.2 42 is the size of it, so the smaller one in there, and you can get up to 512 gigabytes in capacity. So I'm wrong, Cube have made one change. They have increased the size of this thin copper they've put on the back of there just to help keep temperatures under control there. But all they needed to do, I feel, is like they did on the first model, the i7 Stylus, was just simply use a thermal pad right here that connects exactly right above the chipset to transfer heat onto this massive heatsink, really. That's what it would be. So those four screws come off easily. Now this takes a little bit of pressure to pull up. And here we have a thermal pad that's on top of the Core M37Y30. Now be careful that you have earthed yourself. So make sure you're not statically charged. You should actually use a proper table. And if you're going this far, you would have noticed that I haven't done one thing that I should do. Unplug the battery. And I will actually just risk not doing that because I'm going to be very careful not to touch anything. So there's the chipset without the thermal pad on. Now that stock thermal pad they've used is absolutely fine just to leave it there. And if you want to keep things easy, I recommend just leaving it. Now if you go the path that I'm going to go here and replace the thermal pad with a piece of copper, then this is the size I'm going to use, which isn't perfect. Ideally, you want maybe even a little bit smaller, something rectangular that would actually fit the dimensions. So a proper cut rectangle would do a lot better, but this is all I have on hand. And unfortunately, I don't have any uh, powerful scissors or hacks or anything to cut this where I am at the moment. So this is 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters is the size that I'm going to put on top here. So now just used a bit of thermal paste on the die. Now I want to put just a reasonable amount here. Now you can use lots of methods. You can use that plastic bag method with your finger to spread everything around a thin, nice layer. I'm simply just going to put a couple of dollops here. And normally I go overboard when I do this on camera. And when I don't do it on camera, I find I do a much better job. So here goes. I'm using Arctic MX4. You can use any thermal paste, by the way. I wouldn't put a super high quality one on these because it's only a, a core M. We're not talking about your i7 7700K. Okay, that is a, another horrible job. Oh, that's awful. That's more than enough. 
And then that is supposed to be just like a little pea size and then there's a tiny little rice size and things are going kind of horribly wrong here on camera. Now this is the tricky part, is placing the copper so it's not touching any of those resistors and things right next to it. We don't want to cause any shorts, otherwise it'll be game over for this tablet and they probably won't end up publishing this video if that happened. So just place it about there. Give it a bit of a wiggle, push down to just move that thermal paste around, creating hopefully a nice thin layer. And you could use the thermal adhesive, which I've done in the past, but I don't actually think that's necessary, as you'll see in the next step. It's actually going to be held down with the old heatsink screwed above it. So I'm just applying some pressure, still moving that around, and I want it about that position there. Now another piece of thermal paste on the top. Again, this could be thermal adhesive if you're worried about things moving around, but I don't think it will actually move. Once this heats up and get hot, gets hot, I think it would uh, it would stick quite well. So I want to put a rather large dollop here in the middle and try and make that a better thermal uh, paste job than I did just before in the chipset. So about that size, and then we'll put the heat sink back on the top. So put this back on. Now you notice the surface of this is different. I used a hammer to try and level that out a little bit because now we have the increased width here of the one millimeter thick, sorry I didn't mention that before, one millimeter thick copper plate, copper shim there. So this goes on the top. Now what I normally do is just give this also a little move, wiggle around to help spread that thermal paste on the top there. Not too much because we don't want to move that copper heat sink below. Now put the screws back in diagonally, for example this one here, then that one, then that one, then that one just to help even out that thermal paste there. So now that that is done, screwed on, I'm just going to use, reuse that thermal pad, place that on the top, and that should give some contact on the back copper that they have there to transfer heat over. Now if you want to keep things nice and easy, all you need to do is just put a thermal pad here, like I mentioned in the beginning, and that should really help lower temps by a good 10 degrees or so, if not more. Also just a word of warning, Whatever you do, do not put a thick thermal pad here, larger, thicker than one millimeter. If you put a two millimeter one on there, it applies too much pressure on the front screen and you could have the screen glass coming away from the housing that I've seen other people do that put larger thermal pads on. Putting it back together can be difficult because of the volume buttons tend to fall out. Now you have to start with a pogo pin first. So I just flip that around, slot that in at the bottom first. And then keeping everything upside down here with that lid, you see those power buttons, it started to move again. So I'm just going to have to quickly push that out and then try to close it there. Keeping that power button hopefully behaving and staying down there so I can clip it on, but it doesn't want to do that for me. It's actually going back in the case. So that isn't good. There we go. That's going to work. So now that power button's fine, you can go around and start to clip everything in. Now remember, every time you open this tablet up, it will structurally get weaker with those clips. So I only recommend just doing this once. Do it well. And best of luck doing this. So it powered on, fine, no problems. And the results are actually incredible. The results speak for themselves, really. It hasn't gone over 70 degrees. Look at the temperatures now, 65, 66 degrees. I've been playing for about 10, 15 minutes. And in that time period, with the stock set up with thermals, it would have hit a probably, I'd say about 89 degrees or 90 degrees. So that's a difference there of about 20 degrees, which is crazy. So why Cube didn't do something like this just absolutely beats me. I'm not too sure why they did that. But as you can see, performance also seems to be a little bit better. Now you could probably actually tweak up the power limits as well using Intel XTU. And that would give a further boost to graphics. As long as the temperatures don't get too hot. Of course there is the trade-off now, the rear of it is going to be quite hot because it's transferring all that heat away from the chipset. So you can see the rear housing is now climbing at a steady rate, almost 40 degrees. It's getting quite hot to the touch. So if you're going to be using this on your lap or holding it and you don't want the rear casing to get up to 40, 45 degrees, 
then of course don't do this mod here and it's just hit 70 after 12 minutes whereas the stock yeah that would have been over 90 so really really good results Okay guys, so that's the video there. Sorry, it's a little bit long-winded there, but just to quickly recap. So the copper shim that I used is 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters, one millimeter thick. And then you can use really any thermal compound, any decent brand thermal compound will be perfectly fine. And best of luck with your copper heatsink mod.